then launched a beta program, uh, then uh, turned that into a core offer, and then uh, created an, what we call an MRR offer. Um, and then we've scaled it uh, in three years past $5 million in revenue. Um, have a team of 20 people now, but it started out with just me, some hustle um, and uh, growing, growing a group, uh, talking to people in Messenger, uh, getting on a sales call, uh, and then enrolling clients. And my big focus past, uh, for the past three years um, is impact and focusing on creating the best coaching and consulting programs out there that have ripple effects. Um, so that's what we've done. We've helped uh, 20 clients scale their businesses past seven figures. Uh, we've helped hundreds of clients scale their businesses past six figures. Um, and I'm a little biased, but I think we're the best in the world at it. Um, so this training is going to be jam packed, going to be freaking awesome. Uh, take notes, uh, bring out your favorite, uh, note taking device, um, and just, uh, get a lot of value out of this. Um, if your heart feels called to hop on a call and explore, uh, what working with us might look like, um, and how we might be able to help you further. Um, we have our whole team on here, so, uh, you can talk to Marco or you can talk to, uh, Brandy or Preston or Trent. Uh, they're all here and you can hop on a call with one of them um, to explore the opportunity. No pressure. We're not hard salespeople or anything like that. Um, we'll just share with you how we might be able to help. Um, and we don't accept anybody into our programs that we can't help. So we'll be brutally honest of, oh, we can't help you if we can't help you. So um, regardless, you'll get a lot out of this. Uh, and I appreciate you guys so, so much for being here. I see some friendly faces, some clients here. Guys, thank you so much. Uh, you'll get a lot out of this. Um, often we need to be reminded more than we need to be taught. So it's always good to have a coach uh, to tell you and remind you of these things over and over and over. So guys, thank you so much for being here. And I'm going to let Avery take it all away from here. Awesome, guys. So I'm just going to dive right in. We've got a lot to cover today and 90 minutes to cover it. Um, so we're going to go fast, as Andrew said, have notes, like be ready to take notes. Um, and I'll lay some ground rules here as we go. So we're doing an offer creation and messaging masterclass today. I want to show you the two offers that have helped us scale our business and help you actually map out an offer today. So my goal is to, for you to leave this call, uh, with something really ready for you to launch. Uh, or at least a version one of what you can take and develop into something to launch. So what we're going to cover today, we're going to talk about how to create leveraged offers that sustain your business long term. And as I'm just yammering on, can I get a thumbs up from the people I can see if you can see my screen? Fantastic. Uh, we're going to talk about how to create leveraged offers that sustain your business long term. I'm gonna review the exact offer ladder that you need to maximize the lifetime value of your clients so that you can hit seven figures faster because we don't just wanna have an offer and enroll clients. We actually wanna keep ourselves in a relationship with them. We wanna have things for them to invest in and continue helping them get results for a year or more. So we're gonna talk about how to do that. We're also gonna talk about the step-by-step -step process that you can use to build programs that your clients love and that get them results. Right? These don't have to be mutually beneficial. We're gonna review how you can deliver your offers so that you can get out of one-on-one -on -one and done for your work. I know for many of you, you may be working one-on-one, -on -one. building a leveraged offer for some of you might be a little scary, uh, might be the first time. And there's a lot of fear around like, can I really do my magic? Can I really get people the same results and really transfer the knowledge and experience to people in a more leveraged setting, we're gonna show you that yes, you can. And the last thing we're gonna talk about is how to craft your messaging because there's no use in creating a high ticket offer or a leveraged offer if you're not attracting clients who can invest in it. So we wanna talk about the key in your messaging to attracting clients who are ready to invest, who take your offer seriously so that you can get off of the phone with tire kickers and start actually speaking to people who need what you have. Can I get a hell yes in the chat if that all sounds good? <laughs> Heather's laughing at me, but I will, I'm laughing with you, Heather. So yes, thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. Here's why I think this is important for you now. Like this is why we put on this workshop because I know that for a lot of people, your message isn't resonating and you get on calls and you're finding prospects not understanding the value of what you do. Uh, one in the chat, if this is you, you're constantly swamped by like objections, price objections. Give me a number one. If people like seem to get on calls with you and just like they don't really get what you can do and you find yourself having to work really hard to sell them. Yes, I see ones from Morgan, Tams, and Ben. Perfect. Chris, awesome. So this is for you. We're going to talk about how to stop that so that you can be on the phone with qualified prospects. Next, not to poke the wound, but how many of you have been playing offer roulette? You've been trying out different offers. It seems like every few months you're launching something new, trying out a new angle. Give me a two in the chat if that's you. If you're one of my offer roulette people, I used to be an offer roulette person. Yes, I see some offer roulette people. Yeah. So this is important because we have to stop that because secretly what you're doing, if you're in the process of playing offer roulette, you're actually, every time you build and launch a new offer and you don't have a clear, cohesive plan, you add more confusion to your audience. You actually make like you give yourself the problem we talked about a minute ago. Like people are gonna show up like, what are you doing? What is this offer? We didn't you offer something else like 90 days ago? We've gotta get you out of that and get you something solid that's gonna last you for years so that your audience has a clear understanding of how you help them. Uh, also, if you're stuck in one-on-one -on -one or done for you work, you can put a three in the chat. Obviously we know this is a no-no, it is not scalable. You're not gonna be able to hit your revenue goals. Yes, I see all of you. You're not gonna be able to hit your revenue goals long-term. And even though it seems scary and impossible, I promise there's a way that you can get people the same results without that. Lastly, if you don't have a clear path for people to work with you for a year or more, uh, you are missing out on money, sales, revenue, scalability. I want all of you to have a clear path for your clients to come into your orbit, get amazing results and want to stay. And I want you to have a way to continue to work with them. That's a no brainer for you and them because without that, you're always having to refill the pipeline and you never build a solid foundation, stability. And what Andrew has seen and what many of our clients have seen is monthly recurring revenue, which we're gonna talk about having clients who are paying you every month and who are staying with you for a longer period of time is the key to scaling your business. It literally takes care of a lot of the expenses of your business and allows you to focus on growth activities without freaking out because you're starting from zero every month. Cool? Tracking? Great. Every single one of the things we just talked about is a symptom these aren't problems, they are symptoms of a problem. And the problem is your message is unclear and your offers are unscalable. We wanna tackle both of those so you can scale and start to see consistency in your revenue. For many of you, you're on like an income roller coaster. You hustle, 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 book a bunch of clients. And then like the next month you're starting from scratch and like freaking out and going, we need to stop that. You can't think like a CEO and make real empowered decisions from your, for your business from a place of panic or from a place of instability. So that's why this is important. So some ground rule for our session today, playful out, get the most out of this. I'm going to pour into you, Andrew and our entire team are gonna pour into you today. I'm going to give you as much as I can, I said, that I want you to walk away from this with an offer created, and I mean that. We're gonna do that today. So clear away distractions. If you're not on video, my uh, introverts, I hate to call you out, turn your video on, know how to mute or unmute yourself. Be ready to take notes. I wanna see an iPad, a pen and paper, participate by chat. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm describing me as life. Mia, I see you. Um, there may be times during this when we do a little hot seat, we ask questions, 
jump in the hot seat, participate, get that coaching. You have a group of brains here available to you who've helped hundreds of people through this process. Take advantage. And lastly, in order for this to work and for us to have a successful day, overthinking is not allowed. I'm going to ask you to do some scary shit today. And I'm going to ask you to make decisions and take action. You have to leave the editor and the inner critic at home. You cannot do creative work at the same time that you are self-editing. So cut it out. Allow yourself the space for the next 90 minutes to not do that. Cool. Uh, implementation is the name of the game. I'm not going to overload with the information today. We're going to learn and implement, and you will have a mapped out progression of your offers, a scalable offer that I think you'll be ready to sell. Uh, and you're going to understand the messaging around those offers in a way that you've never had before. So get ready. Uh, lastly, a couple more things here. As we go through this, kind of the frame that I want you to look through all of this with is that specificity and imperfect action are the keys to creating great offers, right? The biggest mistake you can make, and after coaching so many people through this, the biggest mistake I see people making is that they're constantly waiting for something to feel perfect until they take it out in the marketplace. Newsflash, it's never going to feel perfect. Angels are not going to come out of the sky and like play trumpets and shoot rainbows out of their butts and tell you that you've hit the right offer and that this is the right niche. It doesn't work that way. The rule is if there isn't a little bit of pee running down your leg, if you're not a little bit scared, then you're probably not playing big enough. Playing big requires you to operate in a space of fear. And I'm going to ask you to do that today. The other part of this, like so imperfect action means, yes, I'm afraid I've done the work that I think I can do and I'm going to move forward anyway, making the best judgments I can based on the knowledge and experience I have. That's all you can do. It's never going to be perfect. Second, remember that great offers are specific. You will kill your offer if when I tell you to get more specific in about 20 minutes when we're implementing, and I tell you how to do that and you resist and come up with excuses and say like, well, my work is special and I'm a unicorn. You are not. You are not an exception to the rules of marketing and messaging that have existed for thousands of years since we sold things to each other in the town square. Same principles appear. The more specific you are to how your offer works and what it does, the more enticing it is to your audience, right? So get specific. And remember, one of my favorite phrases is specificity is an act of bravery in our line of work, right? It's uncomfortable, but it's necessary. Lastly, Andrew alluded to this, 90 minutes isn't nearly enough to show you everything. This is not gonna be a sales fest. This is value and implementation. We're gonna create an offer. I'm well aware that if I help you create the most badass offer on the planet, some of you are still gonna get stuck. Like, how do I market it? How do I sell it? If you want help with that, at the end of the session, Marco, the team can show you how we can help you with that. Um, and if you stay to the end of the session, I'll show you how you can get access to the recording from today, as well as my full workshop notes and the offer examples that we're gonna review. Cool, it's go time. Can I get a thumbs up? A little bit of movement, awesome. I'm looking at Beverly and Ben and Brad and Tamsin, fantastic. All right, so we've hinted at this, settle in. Here's why most businesses are really unsustainable long-term. And if you are a victim of the things that we talked about when we were opening, you have realized that your business is really unsustainable, right? It's probably already starting to burn you out. The reason beneath that is like, you're not building out a clear ascension path for your clients, right? You might have an offer and be able to sell them into it. Um, but most people who are struggling with this, they don't have a clear idea in their own head of their client's journey and where their offers fit into that journey, right? On top of that, it, the offers aren't leveraged and you don't have multiple types of revenue. In order to hit seven figures, 
and really become a CEO of a company that's scalable that you can get out of the day-to-day -day of, you have to have more than one type of revenue. There's one-time revenue. There are repeat customers and there's monthly recurring revenue. We need to get all of those things going in your business in order for this to be sustainable, right? In order to have a sustainable business, I'm repeating myself a little, you have to have a clear offer structure that allows you to deliver great results at scale, right? We have to crack the code and we have cracked the code on how to deliver the same level of results at scale. Here's how we do this. Get your notes ready. Your offers should be structured around the journey of your ideal client and what they need to hit their goals at each part of that journey. Not what you think they want or what you want to offer them, but what they need. Here's how we do this. So I'm actually gonna share my iPad screen. We're gonna have a drawing adventure together. Uh, I will share these slides with you so you have a copy of this and I'll share my iPad notes as well uh, at the end of this session. Let me know if you can see. Thumbs up? Great. So here's how we start to think about this. I want you to think of a graph. And on the lower end of the graph, we've got time, right? This is the amount of time a client spends working with you. On the vertical, we have results. We also technically have trust. This is the level of result the client is able to achieve and the trust that they build in you as the person delivering those results. A typical client journey kind of goes something like this over time, right? They start down here, they don't really trust you. You're not able to get them a great result. And then over time, you can increase that level of trust and increase the level of results that you get with them. And there is a point at which, at least where you are right now, that you reach uh, a happy medium. You get the client the ultimate result that you could get them. And that might take a long period of time, right? If someone worked with you for a year or two years, there is a place that you could get them to where, that is like nirvana, right? Example for us, if someone worked with us for a year or more, we could probably get them to the seven figure mark and get them to a place where they're no longer in the day to the day of their business. They have an, a team of A players who are handling things for them. And they're now in like impact area where they get to think about what they wanna do with their time and their freedom and their money, right? That's the ultimate goal. Somewhere along this journey, right? So if we have here, the ultimate goal of the client, right? And think about, think about your clients. Forgive my chicken scratch there, bear with me. Think about your clients. What's the ultimate goal that they wanna to get to? If someone worked with you for an extended period of time, where could they get? Write down some ideas, like what does that look like? What's the ultimate place they could get to? And then I want you to think about their journey from where they are now to that spot probably has a couple of stopovers, a couple of landmarks on it, right? This ultimate goal today, delivering the ultimate goal is what we're gonna be focused on and what we call the MRR offer, a monthly recurring revenue offer. This is where clients are engaged with you for a year or more and you are on a journey with them to achieve that ultimate goal. We don't launch an MRR offer first, right? Many of us are still learning about our ideal clients, still perfecting our ability to get them great results. So there's usually a milestone in here somewhere. I'll just draw on my little chart here that I would say is like our first major goal post. This is what our core offer is designed to do, right? 
this is the first shift for you. Your core offer, monthly recurring revenue, Dano. Yeah, MRR, monthly recurring revenue. Your core offer is not designed to get people all the way to the promised land, all the way to Nirvana. Your core offer is designed to get them to the first base camp. You're climbing Mount Everest, you get to the first base camp. How long does it take to get to the first base camp? Typically 90 days, like, right? You want the, your first offer that you're gonna have to be around 90 days. Some people may structure their core offer as a four month period. And we'll talk about how to do that and why. But just for the sake of our thought experiment, like we want to be thinking about what result we can get someone in 90 days. The reason why we structure these two offers this in this way, 90 days versus a year, is because each of these offers actually has a different purpose and a different ideal client. The person who's starting from here and needs to go here to base camp one has different pains, problems, needs, and desires than the person who's already achieved a level of success and is ready to go to the top of the mountain. So this is the first shift in offer creation. And this is where many people actually start to get this wrong is that each of your offers should have its own path, meaning its own curriculum. It should also have its own ideal client and the promise, and we'll talk about what an offer promise is, the promise of that offer should be unique, right? There's one offer that's designed to get them to base camp one. And in getting them to base camp one, what we really want to do in 90 days is create quick wins. We're creating quick wins. Why? One, because we want to get them to a point that's relatively stable and also from a business perspective, fund their investment in the next program. So everything we do in the core offer should be around what are the biggest wins that we can help someone achieve in 90 days to set them up for success so that we can work with them for a longer period and get them to the mountaintop. Is that making sense? Is that resonating? The other thing that each of these offers has, so each offer has its own ideal client, its own promise, we're gonna talk about crafting promise, its own curriculum, meaning it's focused on different content, right? What got you to base camp one is not what you need to get to the top of the mountain. Each offer also has its own delivery structure. And as we touched on, business objective. So let's kind of review what that looks like in practice. Looks a little something like this. Uh, nope, wrong one. So the core offer, quick wins, results, get them to that first goal post, create an influx of revenue for them, establish trust and credibility, upgrade them. MRR offer, create ongoing clarity and strategy, probably offering them increased access to you and a container for ongoing execution and continued results. In the core offer, we're just like, what's the biggest result we can get them as quickly as possible? And the MRR offer, we want to be thinking about what can we put in place from a delivery perspective to ensure that people are getting results and hitting goalposts consistently, probably every 90 days or 30 days, right? Because if they keep getting results and keep hitting their goals, they will renew and they can stay for us for year two, year three, year four. 
So today we're focusing on core offer and MRR offer. I would do this and we structure it this way. I know there are tons of different ways to do offers. You've seen people with like little offers and upgrade ladders and all kinds of different ways to do this. After working with hundreds of people, I find having a core offer that you are focused on selling that is ideally a high ticket offer and then upselling people into an MRR offer is the most effective way to help your clients and grow your business. I want you to be in the high ticket space because one, high ticket offers are more scalable. They attract higher caliber clients. You're gonna hit your revenue goals faster. You do not want to be in a space at this stage in most of your businesses where you are chasing $100 sales and have an inbox full of, not stupid, but like an inbox full of low level questions and refund requests. And you have to work three, four, five times as hard to hit that revenue goal. Like not today. We wanna work smarter, not harder. And we wanna maximize the value of our clients, right? So I want you to pick out, if you already have a core offer that's leveraged and scalable, great. The process we're gonna go through, I want you to use to map out your MRR offer. If you don't have a core offer that's leveraged and scalable, meaning it's one to many, doesn't take up a bunch of your time, you could enroll 50 people in it, into it tomorrow and it wouldn't break. If you're not there yet, you're gonna build a core offer today. We need three things to build an offer. And this goes for whether we're building an MRR offer or a core offer. We need to identify an urgent problem that your market is looking to solve, right? If it is not urgent or painful enough, you are irrelevant to them, right? So you may be able to solve a lot of different problems for your client. We need to identify what are the most urgent. The second thing we need is a clear promise, a result that your offer helps them achieve. And we need to communicate that to them in our messaging when we talk about the offer. Lastly, if we make a promise, we have to have a way to deliver on the promise. So we need a proven process, right? In order for something to be scalable, process is involved. Scalable means repeatable. If you don't have a process for getting clients results and they're just coming to you one-on-one -on -one or you're doing done for you work for them, then you don't know, like you're reinventing the wheel every time a new client comes in the door. If we can map out and you already have a process, whether you realize it or not. Some of you may have mapped it out. Some of you may have not. You actually subconsciously already have a process that you use to help people get results. Our job is to extract it and put it at the center of the offer. Is this tracking? Can I get a thumbs up that this is making sense? Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Randy. Awesome. So here's how we identify these three keys for our offers. And remember, like I said, this process, identifying these three keys is the same process if you're working on an MRR offer, the timeline of the results is gonna be longer. So if you've got your paper out, step one, problem. What are the problems that we could potentially solve that our ideal client is experiencing? I want you to, I'm gonna put 60 seconds on the clock. I want you, no joke, to actually map out what are the problems my ideal client's experiencing right now that I could possibly solve. I'll give you some examples of how to think about a problem. If we were in the make money online niche, a problem that we could help people on, maybe our clients are unclear on their niche and their message or they're stuck in done for you work. Their offers aren't leveraged. They don't have consistent leads and sales. They don't know how to build their audience, right? They don't have a dependable, don't have a dependable marketing system, not, no strategy. Maybe they're not closing sales consistently, right? List, don't think, don't overthink, don't allow yourself to edit. I literally want this to be like a brain dump exercise. Allow it to be whatever it is 
and literally the things that come to your mind, what are the problems that my clients experience that I can, that I have solutions for? If you were in the health coaching niche, maybe your clients can't seem to lose weight or keep it off, or they don't have energy, they're unmotivated, poor sleep habits, they don't know what nutrition, nutritional advice. Relationship coaching. My partner and I are always fighting. The spark has disappeared. Our sex life is dwindling. If you're struggling, like if looking at this, you just stop dead and get a blank. My question for you is if you're having trouble thinking about it, when's the last time you spoke to your clients? Right? Most of where this is going to come from is from either you engaging with people in conversations or you going out where your clients are and seeing what they're talking about. So a few more seconds on the clock, just keep brain dump. What are all the things I could help people with? They don't have to necessarily fit together. It doesn't have to be perfect. What are the things that you know how to solve for people? I'm going to see if I can find a little timer for us. Is anyone struggling to even think of the problems that your client has? No, okay, I take that as good. Everyone's working on their list. So just anything that comes to mind I have experience in X, Y, Z. I can help people with this problem. I can help them with that problem. Let it be quick. When you're done, when you feel like you've got a decent list, heads up, eyes to me so that I can see where everyone's at. The goal of this, I want you to, I want you to come up with probably 10 to 20 as a minimum, what are the problems? Okay. We need 60 more seconds. Thumbs up if you need a little more time. All right. Again, here's my examples. If I were in career coaching, people don't know how to find jobs they're qualified for. They can't see how their experience fits in to a new field if they're trying to transition jobs. They don't know how to write their resume and cover letter. They don't know how to get interviews booked or get a response from people when they reach out. Maybe they're not confident in the interviews Maybe they don't have strategies for advancing up the ladder. 15 more seconds. Again, not perfect, just a V1 brain dump. After our time today, you could go back and like do these exercises again and like spend more time. Okay, pencils down. <laughs> Faces up, thumbs up if you've got at least a workable list of maybe 10, 15, 20, great. Here's step two. I want you to look at your list and identify which of them, which of these problems you could realistically help someone achieve in 90 days. Because there may be problems in here that would take longer than that. For example, in my list here, 
of the like make money online, if my niche was about making money online, I might be able to help someone get their message, their offer, start building lead flow and selling in 90 days. But would I really be able to dive into like delivery with them and how they coach their clients? Like maybe not. And they may have the problem of being the person wearing all the hats in the business, but we may not be able to get to that in 90 days. The things I could realistically probably help them do would be like get their offer dialed in, launch it and sell a round of that offer. If I were in the health coaching niche, I might be able to help people like upgrade their nutrition and their sleep, start losing weight and like get a workout plan in place. But I might not be able to solve all of their problems, right? They may not get to keeping the weight off long term. Like, we're not going to be able to touch on strategies for how to do that. I just want to get them into momentum. And I know that in 90 days, like, they're going to hit a milestone, but they're not going to get all the way there. If I was a relationship coach, I might be able to help people like restart the spark in the bedroom and start working on these communication problems, see an improvement, but we might not get them all the way there. We might not get them to a place where they like have a common vision and goals for their relationship and like things are completely revitalized. It might take a little longer. So just circle on your list, take a few seconds, circle the things that you think you could help people get to in 90 days. Again, let it be dirty, let it be quick, let it be imperfect. Transparently, one of the things, one of the muscles you're building, like by trying to shut off the inner critic and just operating quickly and like quick and dirty, you will actually tap back into your instinct and your intuition. Everything you're gonna work on today, you already instinctively know what it should be. You just let your mind get in the way and come up with a bunch of garbage. So by like forcing yourself to just work quickly, you drop down to the level of instinct where you're just operating a little bit on autopilot. All right, so we've got our areas circled. Thumbs up. Looking for a plurality. I see a plurality, fantastic. What results, if you help someone solve those problems, in 90 days, I want you to try to put in a statement, what are the outcomes, the results that you could deliver? Like we just did there, when I was in my head circling my imaginary ones, I could help them create an offer, sell their first round of it, like get sales in the door for the first round of it. That's a result. Create a high ticket offer, get sales in the door for it. I could help them get their sex life, if I'm a relationship coach, back on track. So, okay, that's a result. So play with that. What are, if you had to put an outcome on it, go back to look at your list real quick. When we solve these problems, what are the results of that? What does it look like? when you've solved the problems that you've circled, put it in a um, positive verbiage, like you have done this. You have, I don't, the relationship coaching, reigniting your sex life, like we all want that, so that's a good one, right? Or the health coaching, you have rewired their brain, like, rewired their brain so that they are finally like eating in alignment with their goals. Like eating healthily is not a struggle. They actually enjoy it. They've rewired their brain. They're eating really well. They feel better than ever. Like their energy levels are up. It's a great result. So we're gonna keep going. I know I'm moving fast, bear with me. Once you've got a few results listed, I want you to finalize and try to come up with a succinct statement. In 90 days, I can help someone do what? 
remember the best like promise is specific and measurable. Let me go back here, right? Like if you're coming up with a promise for your offer, any time that we can add a time frame, a number, a measurement to it, it becomes more enticing. I'm gonna ask you, like put some of the statements you're playing with in the chat. Let me see them. So great example, Dano said, peace of mind, more time with family. How much time can we get specific? At the end of 90 days, you're gonna be able to spend X amount of time a week with your family. I help coaches use challenges to add 10K to their existing business in 90 days or less. Snaps for that, fantastic. Like exactly what we're looking for. I help you get this specific result in 90 days. For Cody, build a six figure agency in 90 days. The only way that I might dial that in more, we may be able to get them to a six figure agency um, Six figures would be defined as X amount per month. So it might be more enticing to say, like grow your agency to 10K a month in 90 days. Just a slight distinction. The other thing you might be able to do is um, book X number of agency clients in 90 days. So for Victor, I help affiliates get unlimited leads. Unlimited leads is not specific or measurable. It is immeasurable. So you help affiliates, affiliate marketers, I'm assuming, build a lead generation machine. Are they gonna be able to generate a certain amount of income in 90 days? Are they gonna generate a certain number of leads, get their first 100 or 200 leads in 90 days? I help women who are stuck in codependent patterns rewire their brains and live free of dependency in 90 days, what does go a little deeper? What does living free from dependency look like? In 90 days, you'll free up two hours of your time a day. I'm going to help you. So Tamsin, spot on, we're gonna flip it. I'm gonna help you build and launch your own online business in 90 days, working just two hours a day because you're a busy mom. So just flip that statement around. I help women over 40 rewire their brain to create more vitality, focus, and purpose through the power of neuro movement. So for my friends who are in the personal development space, this will be a little bit harder, but I want you to think often in the personal development space, the first version of this, we go for things that are a little more intangible, focus, purpose, vitality. How to get to that tangible point is to ask, what do they do with it? They get the focus, the vitality, the purpose so that they can blank. There's something there. And in that like missing half of the sentence, there's going to be something we can pull out to make specific. Sometimes with personal development, it's about, I'm going to help people like pick a big audacious goal that they haven't been able to accomplish and accomplish it in 90 days. Like that's a specific, that's more specific. So think about that. Like what do they get when they have vitality, focus and purpose? They do what? And this goes into Jackie, get clear on your SMART goals. Um, maybe in 90 days they can pick two of their SMART goals and actually accomplish them. I help my native community master their English confidently or like learn how to speak English confidently in 90 days. Great. And help you unleash your executive confidence and land your first digital contracts. Yes. Awesome. So you're seeing how that's going. 
So a life free from dependency, uh, we're going to have to get specific about the area the dependency is in. Um, if it is, if the dependency is in a relationship, then the result would be in 90 days, breaking free from your codependent relationship so that you can stand on your own two feet. Or if the dependency is food-based, a result would be in 90 days, um, rewiring your relationship with food in 90 days. Yeah, so I wanna keep going. Really good work. Like you guys are there, You're, this is it, this is the work. One last thing, like as you're working on this, remember this is the promise of what the offer can do for the right client. One of the places people get stuck is like, they'll make the promise too small because they're afraid of planting a flag in the ground for a really great result. But keep in mind, you're not saying every client will get this result. You're saying this is what this program or process can do for the right person. Get clients on demand in 90 days, how many? Right. Lose 15 pounds without sacrificing your faith. All right, did he freeze on you guys too? Okay. How are you guys liking this so far? Good? Cool. Well, I'm gonna check in with him, see uh, what's going on on his end, but I'm sure he's gonna be back. I'm back, um, I don't know what happened. Cool. Anything you wanna add there before we keep running? No, nah, I would love to learn everybody's number one takeaway so far. Um, what we're always doing on our coaching calls is asking for a client's number one takeaway. What that allows them to do is really soak it in, allow it to uh, really um, uh, allow it to soak it into their brain. And also it helps everybody. If you're doing group coaching, which I highly recommend, um, it allows everybody to learn from one another. So I'd love for everybody to share the number one takeaway so far uh and then uh avery will hop back into it avery do you want to share the takeaways yeah sure uh, so chris said base camp to summit love that specificity in the offer is everything love that writing out the problems absolutely peter like most of us try to do this work in our head and we think we're doing it effectively but ideas in your head are not examinable Nothing is real until it's on paper and you can look at it. So I love that takeaway. Make the offer measurable. It's normal to feel scared. I've put out a lot of content, says Cindy, but freeze with following up on the actual offer. We've all been there. I've been there too. Using the metaphor that the core offer is base camp. Yes. Can I get a show of hands just because the this is the first time I've used that analogy. How many of you until that analogy have been trying to fit everything into the core offer? Fantastic. That's good feedback for me. So that means that uh, that analogy is effective. So I'll use it more often. Awesome. The high ticket is just the first checkpoint. Yes. Different offers that reflect different points of the client's journey. I love that. Awesome. Let's keep going. Here's, as you come up with a core offer promise, a couple of things to keep in mind, and this goes for all of the work we're doing today. This goes for literally anything messaging related and secretly problem, promise, process, our message. Like it's your message. We're just using it in service of creating an offer. Anything you're doing with this will evolve over time. 
you've got to get it to the place where you like it's as good as you can make it right now and you run four weeks from now you might like have an aha like i just had an aha about teaching offer creation using the analogy of base camp never used it before but it's an aha and now i can incorporate it so my message will change yours will too so keep that in mind like this is changing what you decide today doesn't have to be set in stone but here's a benchmark for you. When it comes to a promise for your core offer, does it pass the courtroom test? Let's say we take this down the line. We finish this process. You have an offer, you launch the offer, you enroll a group of people into the offer. At the end, they take you to court because they either did or didn't get the result, right? They take you to court because your offer didn't deliver what was promised. The judge in the courthouse is going to look at the promise, and if that promise isn't specific, he's going to throw the case out or find you at fault. A specific promise enables a client and you to know they got the result or they didn't. They were going to book five clients in 90 days. It's simple, it's measurable, it passes a courtroom test. Either they booked the five clients or they didn't, we have a way of measuring it we could try a case on whether or not they did. They're going to lose X number of pounds, specific, measurable. We can judge either they did or they didn't, right? And again, going back, it doesn't mean that everyone's going to get that result, but from a marketing perspective, we want to promise that is that specific because internally, it allows us to know what client success looks like. If clients aren't hitting the result, then we know that we have a problem in the program that we need to address. If it's fuzzy and it's like they're going to have clarity and live their best life, I love Oprah, but live your best life is not a specific result, doesn't pass a courtroom test, right? Cool. Does that make sense, tracking? Here's how we get the result. So we've talked about problem. We need to know what the problems are that we're solving. We need to know the promise that someone's gonna get, like the result that they're gonna get when we solve the problem. So aren't we putting the cart before the horse? We're laying claim to what we're gonna do for a client before we know how we're gonna do it. Here's why. The core offer promise determines the pathway that we use to solve it. So how do we get clients results? By crafting a methodology, a system, a method, a process that when added up equals result. Here's what I mean. Uh, and this is a note for myself to say to you. Um, from a marketing perspective, this is like dirty coach's secret. There's no right or wrong way to create your process. There are no rules to this. Like I'll see a lot of people agonize over like what the steps of their process should be, but the steps of the process are what they say you are based on your experience and your expertise. The purpose of having a process is simply from a marketing perspective, having a clear way to explain and sell what you do. Clients aren't going to analyze your process and be like, mm, you missed a piece in step two. Clients just want to understand how you're going to get them from point A to point B. And the process allows you to explain and sell that how. So keep that in mind going in. Don't let yourself like get caught up in like, is it the right way? So next step on your sheet of paper, and I'll do this with you as an example. On your sheet of paper, using your core promise or the version one of your promise that you've just outlined, put the promise at the top of the page and I want you to identify all of the action steps a client would take in order to achieve that result. Action steps meaning they are doing something. Common mistake is people make the steps learning based, like they're gonna learn this and then they're gonna learn that. And then you get to the end of all the steps and there was no like, they're gonna do something. 
So I want you to list out quick and dirty what steps does a client need to do in order to get that result? So example, if our core offer or our promise was in 90 days, what do they need to do? I'm making this up, but like first they need to like maybe they need to schedule time in their calendar to actually start putting activity like activity time in my head means workout time in the calendar maybe they need to keep a food journal and again no particular order i'm just thinking of everything that comes to mind for one week so we can see what their diet consists of uh, they need to, if I'm tackling diet and exercise in this particular promise, I know that they need to create a meal plan. Maybe they need to identify their macros. They need to and use those to create the meal plan. Uh, they need to create their workout plan. They need to execute workout plan. Three times a week. If they're creating their macros and their meal planning, maybe they need to actually prep those meals. They're probably going to have to do some weigh-ins. If I was in the make money online space and it was like, create core offer. I have the worst handwriting, so just bear with me. Core offer and sell 30K of that offer. They're going to have to choose niche, map out offer, They need to identify their lowest hanging fruit. Like who could they reach out to with this offer that's already in their network? Once they've mapped out the offer, maybe they need to create a one-sheeter. reach out to X number of prospects. Book calls, close calls, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What if the client doesn't get the result we promise? Uh, Cindy, that might've been an old question. If the client doesn't get the result we promised, either our process is incorrect or the client didn't execute. So we fix the process. We may choose to work with the client until they do get the result. Or sometimes clients don't get results, but we try to work with them until they do while making sure that our process is actually dialed in to get them the result. So map that out, a couple minutes more, just real brain dump, like everything 
that you could think of that a client needs to do in order to get that result. Don't even try to put it all in order because it, it won't come out of your head in order. Just brain dump it. And when you're looking at your list, your list should be two things. The steps should be mutually exclusive, meaning no two steps cover the same thing. And when you look at the list all together, it's completely exhaustive. Meaning if they did all of this, would they get the result? If they took these actions, they booked five, you know, 10 calls, try to whatever, would they get the result? Yes, good, we've arrived. We can polish it in a minute. If not, what are we missing? What's not in there that they need in order to get the result? Take a couple more minutes. Questions as you're doing that? Any questions as you're like brain dumping? Chris is like, no, nah, man. <laughs> I'm good. Good. When you feel like your brain dump is at a good place, thumbs up me so I can just see it. Heather's my star. Like, Heather, you're always on the screen, like in my little grid. So I'm, I'm using you as my indicator for how people are doing. Thumbs up from Peter. All right, we're getting there. We're gonna keep going. Here's what you do. There's an invisible step here that we're not necessarily talking about. Once you do your brain dump, I would want you to take the brain dump and put it in order. If it didn't come out in sequential order, like first, second, third, that would be our next step. Put it in sequential order. Because what you're gonna do after that like you brain dumped, you probably end up having a list of 10, 20, sometimes even more steps. Look for commonality in the steps. Once you've got them in order, or at least they feel like they're in order, you can do one of two things, put them in order and then group them together. Or if you like have a highlighter, just highlight the ones that go together. I'm looking for three to five big chunks, right? What we're doing from a big perspective is taking all of these steps and breaking them down into like pillars or <clears throat> modules that are gonna be in your offer later on. And I want no fewer than three, no more than five. You could really even do six, no more than six, right? So in my example, if I go back and look at my example of creating a core offer and sell 30K of it, there are probably gonna be a bunch of pieces that are foundational, right? Like identify your niche, map out the offer. Then there's gonna be some pieces that are related to like audience building and like prospecting, getting people in the pipeline, getting calls booked. Then there might be some pieces on like sales, how to close those calls. There might be some pieces on launching or delivering that offer. So I'm just looking for those commonalities so I can start to see how all of these steps organize themselves into an overarching process. Is that clear? Does that make sense? It'll take maybe 60 seconds to for you to highlight. Can I get some ones in the chat if you got your sections broken up? You're ready. So step one, optimize your mindset. Step two, optimize your social presence, web presence, growth strategy, and brand language. Fantastic, really 
Chris snaps. If you don't have proof of concept yet, but in theory it should work, go based on theory, and then we're good, we would need to find people to test it with. So yes, go based on theory, and we can test our theory in the marketplace. One, 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 fantastic. All right, I'm gonna just trust you guys that it's okay for me to keep rocking and rolling. So as you already kind of sensed, this is your signature process, right? When you break these down into three, between three and five steps, this is like your methodology. I want each of those steps to have a name, just like Chris did here. Optimize your mindset, optimize your social presence, etc. Name your steps and then name the process overall. It's your signature process. It's also the structure of your curriculum. A couple of things of note for those of you who are developing a core offer, these process, like these steps are probably sequential or linear, right? Clients are implementing step by step by step to get the result over 90 days. For those of you who may be building out an MRR offer, this gets a little less linear because clients over the course of a year may take different paths of implementation. So for an MRR offer, you're still going to be able to group your steps um, like with other things that are like them, but it's possible they're going to take the form of pillars. Like they may be focused on this area or this area or this area. And there could be inside of each section parts that are executed linear, parts that are executed linearly, but it is unlikely that over the course of a year, you would have a like month one, month two, month three, month four, six, eight, 12, right? It just doesn't work out that way. So for an MRR offer, think pillars. For a 90 day offer, think steps like one, two, three, four, five. The other thing is you go back and finesse this over the coming day before you launch it. Uh, focus on implementation and action. As I said before, a lot of people in first time offer outlines, you will focus heavily on teaching and theory and you forget to tie that theory into steps. We want the clients to rack up wins early and often. We want like momentum right out of the gate. So when you're looking at your steps and kind of polishing up and re evaluating them, I want you to ask, what can they be doing in the first two weeks to start getting results in the door? Even if it's small wins, what can I do to get them into action sooner and get wins sooner? This is gonna help people build momentum so they stay engaged throughout the 90 days. And if we can get small wins in the beginning, when we ask them to take bigger action that like maybe requires a little bit more of a leap of faith, they've built up that muscle and are ready to take that leap of faith because they've built their confidence with the small wins. So when you go back and look at this, I want you to think about like, how can I rack up wins faster for them? Cool. I wanna take a couple minutes and just open it up to questions before we get into like the delivery, like how do we deliver? all of this, um, can, if you have a question, pop it in the chat so I can see it as you're doing this work. We'll take a few minutes for cues and then I wanna get into like, once we have our process, how do we deliver? So if you've got a quick question, hit me up, pop it in the chat. I'll wait just a few seconds here and if there are no questions, onward we go, onward, upward, offward to the wizard, to the Emerald City. All right, I love you guys, fantastic. I'll keep checking the chat and make sure there are any more. All right, I just wanna make sure I'm not like driving you too quickly. How do we price and deliver our offers? All right, so the goal of the process is you have an outline of how you deliver a result to people. Now we need to figure out like, how do we like actually deliver that? Three things here. In order to deliver a great experience and great results, there are three C's in offer delivery, content, coaching, community. Cindy says, I can think of pillars for health, but not steps. 
fitness nutrition mindset. So for Cindy, what there may be pillars, but there are probably things in those pillars that they're working on first. So I would look at like linearly, what do they need to do first in each of those areas? So they might be working on fitness, nutrition, and mindset sequentially over 90 days. What's the first thing they do in fitness, nutrition? Like first thing in fitness, first thing in nutrition, first thing in mindset. So in fitness, it might be putting the time on the calendar. Nutrition, it might be the food journal. I just made that up. But you might be able to map out three linear paths and then marry them into one. Like what's the linear path of nutrition, the linear path of fitness, the linear path of mindset. And then how can I combine those and do a cohesive, like this is what we're doing the first week. If it's hard to get clients quick results within two weeks, mm, change what you define a result as, right? Uh, John, can you give me an example of what the promise of your offer is or what you're doing with your clients? Uh, okay, so uh, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah thank you. So uh, I want to teach my native community able to speak English within 90 days just to give yep. them to build the confidence on them. Yep. So, uh, it's kind of hard for me to build the confidence and let them feel confident enough they can say that they can speak English within two weeks. For so, sure, but they could learn a set of basic phrases, like give an example. I travel internationally full time. So I'm in Italy right now. Before this, I was in Croatia and Hungary. In two weeks, I could learn basic phrases that allow me to go into a shop and order one of something or ask for a check or say hello, please, and thank you. So in two weeks for them, I would think about like, can they learn enough basic phrases to go into a shop and like have an interaction with someone? Doesn't mean a conversation, but could they go order something? Could they go to a market and ask for one of something? That's a win. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Snaps for John. All right, three things, content, coaching, community. Pretty straightforward. Here's what I want you to know about this. Uh, we've talked about this. As we outline the three C's, I want you to keep this simple and scalable. You will be, if you are not confident in your ability to deliver results yet, which is okay, you will be tempted to throw in a lot of extra stuff, like one-on-one -on -one calls, individualized work, done for you elements that will overwhelm you and lead to burnout, which is why some of you are here now, right? Also, do not underestimate the power of community and camaraderie. Most people think like, don't get all in your ego and think that you're like so special that one-on-one -on -one with you is the way to do it. Never underestimate the power of people learning from each other in a group. Someone will share an insight um, or watching someone else get coached will cause someone to have a breakthrough. So don't underestimate that. It'll feel new or uncomfortable um, working in a leveraged way, but trust that your confidence grows as you do the work. Here's something I want you to like tattoo on the inside of your mind. Confidence is the reward for doing the work, not the requirements to do the work. Many of us have this backwards. We think that we have to feel confident before we do it, when in fact the doing is what gives us the confidence. So with that being said, delivery structure for a core offer. Most of you know what this looks like. Content is probably going to be in a learning platform. It's probably going to be video content. You're going to have exercises, templates, resources, action steps for them. The coaching format is going to be in a group fashion on a call much like this one, right? Probably at least once a week, maybe twice, but start with one. If your clients need more, add a second call. You would, in theory, no longer be on one-on-one -on -one calls, so you have real estate space on your calendar to spend more time with them each week if you need to. Your community is going to be a Facebook group. 
maybe a Voxer group if that's your style. It's optional. But like this is the delivery structure of your core offer. In a core offer, much of the work falls on the content. We think it falls in the coaching, like we really have to get them like results in the group coaching and we'll lead on that. Falls in the content. Having a leveraged offer really tests whether or not you in the teaching of your material teach clearly and are able to get people like the breakthroughs and into action. If when you map out your offer and you think about doing it in a leveraged way, you have a lot of stories come up of like, I can't do it, it won't work this way, blah, blah, blah. I invite you to ask if the content is good enough. Most of the time when we feel really certain that things have to be done one-on-one, -on -one, even if we have a way of mapping out content, it's because we haven't done the previous step, mapping out the step-by-step -step process to get results. It's because that process isn't mapped out well enough and the steps are not mutually exclusive or completely exhaustive. And like, we haven't actually looked at them to see if they get the results. We're like flying by the seat of our pants and kind of half-assing it. Like they need to do these exercises instead of actually asking like, no, what do they need to do to get the result, right? Did I just repeat my slide? I did. Oh, no, I didn't. Delivery structure of an MRR offer. I'm losing my marbles, stick with me. Delivery structure for an MRR offer. An MRR offer, you still have a learning platform with templates and resources. I think I missed up a slide here. So for your MRR offer, forgive me, just ignore my slide. You'll still have a learning platform. That platform is probably gonna be more extensive. Um, the coaching in your MRR offer you will still have group calls with yourself, but you will likely have a coaching bench of subject matter experts because you can't possibly coach on all the pillars required to help people get to the top of the mountain. Like you're gonna need some support. So in an MRR offer, this is where you're building out a coaching bench. So they, people don't just have access to you, they have access to subject matter experts who can help them in the different pillar areas you've identified. Uh, and for an MRR offer for the community, we would still have a community, but we're also going to periodically throughout the year, get everyone together at a mastermind or an event to seal their learning, create a new game plan, right? Every 90 days, we need a new roadmap. We can't just like create a roadmap, send people off for a year, in an MRR offer, every 90 days, we need to get everyone back together, reflect on what happened in the previous 90 days, figure out what their biggest problems are, map out a roadmap for their next 90 days, like get everyone reinvested in their vision and re-engaged. This is how we keep people over a long period of time. It's not just like come in and you get some content, you're creating a cadence of experiences in a core offer where in addition to the content and the coaching, the community is coming together for objectives. Does that make sense? Are you tracking with me? So like those, for those of you who are working on an MRR offer, um, you may not have a full year's worth of content mapped out yet, that's okay. You can seal in and like keep people getting wins by implementing things like a quarterly mastermind or even monthly intensives for your clients where they're coming together and they're getting really clear on what their roadmap is, really clear on like what they're focused on. Because the biggest obstacle to client results in an MRR offer, biggest obstacle to client results in a core offer is usually like content not being structured right and they're not being like clear action steps right off the bat, right? We don't get them into action soon enough biggest results to optical op, biggest obstacles to results in an MRR offer are lack of clarity. People are constantly inundated with information from tons of different sources. So it's our responsibility to make sure that periodically we are recreating clarity for them on exactly what they should be focused on. That's what we use things like masterminds for. 
So, whether you're doing an MRR or a core offer, like the structure of what the components of the offer are are pretty simple. You've got a couple of options when it comes to delivery. Uh, three paths for this. One, build in advance, right? Specifically thinking of core offers here, you could film the content, cr create all your templates and resources, put it into a learning platform, pre-sell it, open the doors, or wait, it, wait until it's complete, launch and sell. Pros, like clients get access all at once and you don't have to worry about teaching it live, but the cons of this, for many of us who are perfectionists, procrastinators and overthinkers, is like this is a quick way to be like working on that core offer until sometime next Christmas, right? So if you're an Avery, this is not the option for you. If you are an Andrew, who's a visionary and it's like, oh, I filmed it in a weekend. This is the, a great option for you, right? Andrews are few and far between, which is why we're all in this class. Option number two, partial build out. You can film like the first couple of modules to, and create you know, the templates that go with that, put that into a learning platform and future date the remaining modules. So you could have the first one or two sections complete, like spend a long weekend filming that, getting into the can and future date the remaining modules and you know have the dates that they unlock and then start selling. This is a great option for you if you're good with sticking to deadlines. MRR, yes, equals summit offer. How to handle different onboarding times in a 90 day program. Uh, hold that one and ask me about it. We're going to do a Q&A. Yes. Um, so partial build out, it's great because it gives you that peace of, peace of mind. There's something for people when they sell into it. But the drawback is if you're focused on selling and you've still got the worry of like building out the remaining modules, you might get to a point where like, you start out and you're like three weeks ahead of them and eventually you're two weeks and then you're one week and then you're like rushing to complete the content and stay ahead of them and it's risky, right? But different strokes for different folks. Option three, teach it live. For those of us who are procrastinators, uh, this is probably your option, right? You're actually gonna begin selling before you're ready, set a start date. And then when you sell it, you're going to tell people like each week, there are going to be two sessions. I'm going to have a live teaching session. And then later in the week, after you've had a chance to implement, we'll do a Q&A session. And when you're done with each teaching session, you can put that recording into the learning platform as the video for that particular lesson or module. And tell yourself that you'll go back and re-record it, but you know, may or may not happen, but at least it, it's there. It's good enough for now. This is great for overthinkers and procrastinators. And if it's your first time doing an offer, teaching it live allows you to get client feedback in real time, right? Asking them what their takeaways are, noticing the questions that they're asking, there might be gaps in the content, and then you can go back and refilm it piece by piece and actually fill in those gaps so that the finished videos are better than the first time you taught it. Cons you're still splitting attention, right? You can fall behind and it can be overwhelming to get caught up. Um, creating wall coaching can cause you to second guess your program material, but this is probably the best option for procrastinators. I would say teaching it live or a partial build out are the option most of you are gonna go with. There are gonna be a few of you who feel confident enough to just film it in advance. Um, how to handle the different onboarding times in a 90 day group program. I'll answer that right now. So there's two options. Um, you can do the onboarding as a group. So for example, for our core offer, the onboarding call happens right before the Monday group coaching call every week. 
or right after the Friday group coaching call every week. So when someone onboards, there are two possible like half hour slots they can attend. We onboard them as a group, right? If you're doing one-on-one -on -one onboarding, um, you would just have time and a calendar. I think the question you're asking is like people starting at different points in the program. Um, making sure like, are you asking how to handle the fact that people are gonna be coming in at different parts of the process? Because if so, I have an answer to that in a minute. I'll keep going, but I'm assuming maybe yes, uh, and I have an answer. So pricing guidelines for your core offer, for what you were mapping out today, I want, ideally for you to be in the three to six K range. If you need to start lower and work your way up, I stand like totally okay. Three K could be insane for some of you right now, but maybe one K isn't. So you sell four or five people at one K and make a commitment to yourself to increase the price. Be mindful about undervaluing yourself. If you do that, like don't get in a position where you're stuck at a price point or refuse to upgrade it keep your commitment to yourself and upgrade it after you get a few sales when that confidence increases and know the point that you want to get to with your pricing right the other kind of downside of that if you go too low where the q a sessions are all over the place because the people are at different points don't worry i know it's a fear it's in reality, after running group coaching programs, uh, people are almost always focused on the same areas. And this is a question about how you actually run the group coaching calls themselves. Which we're not gonna talk about how to do that today, but there are ways to run the group coaching call to make sure everyone gets served. How do you get confidence in your pricing? Yes, two ways to get confidence in your pricing. The more people you work with, the more confident you'll get. If you're lowballing yourself, eventually it creates a sort of low grade self loathing because you know you're lowballing yourself and you like have to raise the prices. Um, but like serving people and getting them results will increase your confidence to raise the price. Examples, one last thing on pricing. We often lowball ourselves because we underestimate the value of the transformation we're creating, especially for those of you who aren't in the make money online space. Like it can be a little weird for people who are outside of that space to think about the value their offer creates. But let's look at our examples of like a relationship coach. What's the monetary value of like reigniting the spark in someone's marriage? and like saving their marriage. Incalculable, right? The, what's the monetary value of rewiring someone's relationship with food and putting them on a path to one, get the body they want and desire, but two, live longer, have more time with their kids, like not be stuck with diseases and ill health. So you have to think about like, if I'm delivering on the promise, like go back and look at the promise that we created, what's the actual value of that? Like what's the value to their life long-term? That'll help you like price appropriately. And you could acknowledge like the value is $10,000 and I'm still not comfortable charging that. Like I just don't feel confident. That's okay. Start it too. Sell a few people work really hard with them, get them results, and then commit to yourself. Okay, my next, from here on out, it's gonna be three or four. Sell a few more. And then from here on out, I'm taking the leap. It's gonna be five or six. And I'm gonna, I know that five or six is where I wanna be. And so I'm like, I'm good. Yeah. So Victor, we're not gonna, I'm not gonna be able to talk about like marketing and product launching, but we might have some Q&A time. Andrew may be able to touch on that. Let me wrap, wrap this mother up here. 
uh, I put together some example pricing structures. So for example, uh, like you can have payment plans. Again, you're the boss. You could decide how you want to price this as long as you're not lowballing yourself. And you can decide if you want payment plans. Rule of thumb though, never extend a payment plan beyond the length of the program. So if the program is three months and you're at 1497, you could offer them three pays of 499 or two pays of 749, right? At the most. Just don't let it go because you never want someone to be beyond the length of the program and you're like, your last payment's still due. You will never see it. Well, I won't say never. Let's not plant bad thoughts in our heads, but we don't want to be chasing people who are complete with the program for payment on a program. Clear? For MRR offers, uh, the ideal price range is 20 to 30K. Remember that during the first rounds of an MRR, you're not going to have a full year long curriculum built up. So, like, if you're launching an MRR, like, that same fear of, like, oh my God, how can I charge that much will come up. Remember, at this level, clients have already worked with you and gotten results. They're paying for access and intimacy. So, in an MRR, people can pay in full, pay in full, pay in full with incentives. Maybe there are extra VIP days for people who pay in full. Like you can create incentives to pay in full, or they pay monthly, which would be, you know, a deposit and eleven payments after that. Deposit to get started, and then eleven monthly payments. That's really straightforward, depending on how you price that. A couple of rules here. Never discount your work or offer a percentage off the price. It just is not a good look. Sends a message that you're not confident in what you do. If you need to generate a round of sales, consider things like bonuses, access to you in order to seal the deal. Never like on a sales call or in a conversation with a prospect, offer a discount. This is bad. The matter of principle. And Understand, like if this is the first time selling an offer, remember there's a period of time where you're dialing in your confidence, the messaging around it. Like it's going to take a few reps on sales calls to really feel good about it. So you might not get a yes. Remember that it takes a little time to dial in your message, your marketing, your sales skills. Investigate the root causes of a no before you determine that it's the offer itself and scrap the offer, right? I see people make this mistake a lot. Like they get a, the two or three no's and they're like, oh, I need to change the offer. And so then you just end up in a cycle. Investigate the underlying cause of the no. The underlying cause of the no could be that they like really didn't have money or they just had some questions about like your authority and your ability to get them the result. But the offer itself sounded good. Ask questions, follow up with people. Last thing I got here is beta. We were talking about people starting at different times. So the first time you launch an offer, if you are teaching it live or doing a partial build out, or even if you're doing a full build out and launching it, you're probably gonna start with a beta. For ultimate clarity, I want you to know, a beta is not a separate offer. It's like nothing different. The beta is just the word we use for the first round of any new offer that's sold. And all this means is the first time we go out of the gate with this, we're probably gonna set a smaller enrollment size. We're not gonna go hog wild. We probably wanna get like five or 10 people in. If it's our first time offering it, we might offer them a little bit more intimacy. Like maybe we're gonna give them Voxer access to us, or we might do an extra weekly call because we want to ensure they get the results so that we get those testimonials and referrals, right? The first round of people always get a little more access to you so that you can ensure that they get wins. You can ensure you collect testimonials so that when you go to open this up and just sell it evergreen, you have a track record, you have results, you have people you can point to and say like, this really works. So as an example, if I were doing a core offer, we might say we're going to enroll 10 clients in the first round. 
We're going to do live teaching sessions and live Q&As for these people, and they're going to get Voxer access to us just for these 10 people. That's all beta is. So when you hear people talk about beta, I just want you to be clear, don't think of it as like a separate thing. It's just the special arrangements you've made for that first group of people. So I want you to take a couple of minutes, make some decisions. How will you deliver your content, coaching, and community? And I saw someone mention accountability. Uh, accountability is part of coaching. It's part of what we're doing in the coaching. So yes. So how are you going to deliver your content? Are you going to do full build out, partial build out? You're going to teach it live. How are you going to deliver your coaching? Are you going to do a, start with a group call each week? If you're doing teaching live, do you want to do a live teaching session and then a Q and A session? And how do you want your community to take 30 seconds? Just make some notes. Once you've got that mapped out, one other thing. So what you can do, what we've done today is basically create an offer outline, right? Like all the work we did today could be done in an entire afternoon. Like you could create and map out a core offer in an entire afternoon by identifying the problems taking some time to co hone in on a really good process. I skipped one. Mm -hmm. Problems, really good promise, map out a cohesive process, and then structure the delivery and create the plan for how you're going to deliver it. This can be done in an afternoon. This could be done in a weekend. How many of you have been stuck trying to do this for months or longer? Does seeing like seeing it put in this order help you see like that you you have to have the clear roadmap of how this is going to work but everything doesn't have to be perfect to be ready to go have i at least helped to create that clarity for those of you who just raised your hand yeah don't languish like if you've been languishing can I get a yes in the chat? Can I get some commitments that those of you who have been stuck are no longer like, will not let yourself languish, that you will have an offer, if not by the end of the day, by tomorrow, to start having conversations with prospects about? William says, I invested 8K for this info and this class was free. Yeah. Here's what this looks like, all kind of mapped out. What we've created is a core offer outline, essentially. And I'm gonna show you an example of like what it might look like. We actually also created the messaging around this. The problem, promise, and process is the thing that goes into the content when you talk about this offer, right? Notice how we didn't spend a lot of time on like, there's gonna be this many coaching calls and they're gonna get ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba. like, no one cares. They care about the problems that they're having, the promise that you're making to them and the process that you're gonna use to get them the result. Yeah, Sydney's just starting out and doing one-on-one. -on -one. Total caveat, this class is about creating a core offer, but that entire process, problem promise process, you can use it to get clearer on how you help your one-on-one -on -one clients get results and be using those one-on-one -on -one sessions to begin building your curriculum, right? Like you could be putting this into place with what you're doing now and be building out a core offer on the back of those one-on-one -on -one sessions, using those as almost like me teaching or validation sessions. 
Yeah. So you, if you've never done it, the work that you want to do before, you may book some people one-on-one, -on -one, but the messaging around how you're going to sell them is still problem, promise, process. Here's what this looks like together. This is what Andrew calls a one-sheeter. I will put the link to this in the slides before I share them. Like everything we did today is, hey, if you're stuck here and want to, like, if you're stuck at point A and want to get to point B, I can help you do that. Problem, promise, process. So here's what I want you to leave with today. I want you to leave with a version one of your core offer or your MRR offer mapped out. I want you to have a clear understanding of your messaging for this and a path to be ready to launch and deliver it. The things we didn't talk about today how does one launch a core offer, right? How do we launch it? How do we get clients in the door for it? How do we go out and book conversations for it? Those are all of our next steps. What do we do once we get those round of five clients? How do we turn it evergreen, right? These are things that we help clients with, but I want you to leave today having a clear understanding of your offer and what you're doing. I'd love to have Andrew come on and talk about some of our clients and some of the people we've helped like through this process and what this looks like when people implement it and share a few stories because when you get this mapped out and you actually have a core offer and you can sell it repeatedly, things open up in your business. You're not stuck in one-on-ones. You're not stuck doing done for you's. This is the goal for every single person here. Yeah, give me one second, Avery. Did you guys enjoy that? Can we give some snaps for Avery? Fucking crushed it. Good stuff. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Um, that was hella comprehensive when it comes to creating the offers, uh, the core offer, the MRR offer. Um, the biggest challenge comes when you're marketing it, when you're selling it, when you're delivering it and things come up with your clients and you have questions or things don't work out as planned and you need a quick answer um, and getting the best answers. Um, I, I've invested over $300,000 into coaching programs over the past two years. And I'll tell you, Bad advice will lead you down a terrible, terrible, terrible path. But good advice will accelerate your, uh, accelerate your path to getting you to your goals than anything else. Um, so uh, I just want to want to go over some of the results of uh, what our clients have been able to do with marketing these offers, with selling these offers, with delivering these offers in a streamlined manner, uh, and to provide you guys with some uh, inspiration to do the same. Um, is that okay if I share with you guys some inspirational stories from our clients?
Is that cool? Is that all right? Okay, cool. Jackie, awesome. Um, if you guys haven't been to this page yet, this is where we put up a bunch of our uh, video testimonials, a bunch of our client results. Um, it goes, our marketing team can't keep up with it because it just goes on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Um, <clears throat> we can uh, go back to this. Um, up here, we've helped people like Cole Gordon um, develop his core offer and MRR offer and start marketing it, start selling it. We helped him start his Facebook group from nothing uh, to now he's around 3,000 members uh, doing well over $200,000 a month uh, from his core offer and M MRR offer. Absolutely crushing it. He's a sales coach. Um, and then we have uh, Stacy and Jen Conkey. I'm actually going to play poker with them tonight. I'm stoked. They were doing everything brick and mortar. They were doing things offline. We started with them from absolutely nothing, absolutely zero, and uh, helped them start their Facebook group. They have around 4,000 people in their Facebook group now. And uh, they scaled this month. They crossed the $200,000 marker uh, just this month alone. And we started with them about 11 months ago. So they've grown super quick. Emily Sussel last month had a 90K month. She started with us at 6K per month. Last year, she helps yoga coaches uh, grow their businesses. Uh, we work with uh, Eli Wild, who's Tony Robbins' number one salesperson. He put up one post and made over $100,000 from one post on Facebook. Um, list goes on and on. Uh, we, Kavitha is a, uh, a marriage coach. So it's not just make money online. It's not uh, just health offers. Uh, it's not just fitness offers. It's not just relationship offers. It's really anything in the coaching and consulting space. And I uh, highly recommend going through these, sourcing inspiration, um, and just saying that like it works. Um, you stay the path uh, and surround yourself with the right people and um, uh, and just keep going after it. The only way that you can fail is if you quit. Um, and the reason why I've been able to grow my business so fast over the past three years is because I've invested into programs and I've surrounded myself with the right people. Um, I've learned the right things, surrounded myself with the right people and didn't quit. And uh, from going through Everybody's program, Sam Ovens, Dan Henry, uh, Traffic and Funnels, uh, Talking More, all of them. Um, I can say, hands down, we have the best coaching program uh, that I've ever been through. Again, I'm a little biased, um, but um, I guarantee you if, if we get on a call uh, and we believe that we can support you, we can definitely help you achieve your goals. Uh, again, there are people we get on the call with and we're like, we can't help you. But uh, there's some people that come into the program and make uh, John Whitting made over $100,000 in his first month with uh, uh, a new program. So, um, yeah, I wanted to open up the conversation with you guys. Uh, if you want to hop on a call with us um, and just explore it, um, that would be awesome. No pressure. Uh, we can tell you more about our offers, about Authority Accelerator, about Seven Figure CEO. See if we're a good fit. Uh, if not, totally cool too. Um, Brandy just dropped the link down there. I think we have another link, which is a link for Trent and Marco. Uh, if you guys want to hop on there, um, yeah. If you could put that in the chat, that would be awesome. Um, but yeah, guys, uh, really what I wanted to do today is bring you guys massive freaking value. Um, we believe in implementation and execution more than anything else. Um, as you can see from this training with Avery, it's all about doing. I see it in the coaching space way too much where there's just way too much training and not enough implementation. And I encourage you guys, uh, I don't think that's clickable, Avery. But I encourage you guys to be incredible coaches, incredible consultants, and have your clients implement and actually take action to get the result. Um, so I hope this structure helped you guys become better coaches, consultants today. 
Uh, if you guys have any questions for me and Avery right now, bring them at us. And you guys can just like, let's just hashtag question in the chat and then we'll take questions. Chris, thank you, brother. Thanks for being here. Did you fry everybody's brains? Everybody's brains. I brain. hope not. I hope I inspired everyone's brains. Me to too. Implementation. I mean, we're here. Like you have access to these two brains. So I'm gonna play like finger pointer roulette and pick someone in a second. Cause I know, there we go. I know we have questions. And Chris said his, uh, he's super inspired. Questions were answered. Love so I repeat myself and love to ask how to handle Q and A calls with people a lot of different stages in the journey. So there are entire frameworks for this inside of our programs, but like in brief, well, what I'd say is it's about the structure of the call. Um, most people run their group Q and A calls like an endless line. Like people are just waiting to ask their question. There are actually ways that you can structure the group call where you're sourcing the biggest bottlenecks that people have and pulling out the common threads underneath those bottlenecks and using the common threads to coach solutions to the entire group and reflecting it back to the group. And when you're able to run the group call that way, it doesn't matter if people are at different levels of the spectrum or different points of their journey. At the end of the day, like people's questions are gonna fall into one of the five or six like core areas of the process and there's going to be an opportunity for you to just coach them and like get them what they need as a group and also help them learn like by you uncovering the deeper like root beneath the question, you're helping people who are too afraid to ask about it. So it's just a, it's a coaching skill set that you have to learn and you can learn that. And we have processes and uh, like entire frameworks and trainings on how to do that. Yep. Yeah, um, another big component is being aware of uh, everybody that is on the call. Um, so if you're getting questions that are hyper-specific just to one person, um, it's not gonna be super beneficial to go down the rabbit's hole for 15 minutes just to serve that one person. So often what I'll do is like, okay, that's a hyper-specific question for that one person. So I'll say, hey, Avery, I will, um, I'll shoot you a Loom video to answer that after this call. Is that okay? Yes, cool. And then that allows more space for questions that would serve the group as a whole. And I love Loom videos, just screen recording videos for clients. Um, it's a great way to um, add content to your programs and serve your clients at the same time on a one-on-one capability so yeah fair is asking how to structure result based offers for health or wellness um for example coaching for improvements for autistic individuals so it might require a little more thought but one of the things i'm not entirely familiar with the market but Perhaps there's a promise that you could make around the amount of, like I'm thinking about if someone is on the autistic spectrum, the experience they or their caretakers might be having might be on a spectrum of like good or bad days, right? There are days where things just aren't going really well. We're not able to socialize. We're just like, not able to create a positive experience for that individual, we might be able to like use messaging along the terms of like having more good days or going from a place where uh, we're not able to communicate and connect and socialize to a place where we are, where 
that individual is able to live a full life connected, being able to socialize. The other thing I would take for them is what are the goals by helping them with their health and wellness? What are the, like the improvement areas? Are people wanting to get back into society, join a workforce? Like, are there tangibles that they're going after that we get to speak to, if that makes sense? I don't know if, and like, it'd require a little more thought for me, but that's, those are the directions my brain goes initially. I don't know if Andrew has anything more there. Yeah, it's basically what you said. Um, you can track anything. Uh, you just need to create your own scale out of it. Um, and we have um, Justin and Shannon uh, who are in the health space. They help um, women with their thyroid uh, and improve their health. And they have different uh, tracking uh, surveys um, that allows uh, the clients to self-report uh, how, how they're doing, uh, better or worse, uh, in different areas. Um, some of the questions are on a Likert scale. So on a scale from one to 10, how are you doing with this? Um, just a simple survey would do to be able to track uh, improvement in that area. Yep. Fairy's asking, um, or not Fairy, excuse me. Peter was asking outcomes important for coaches and consultants. Anyone in like the coaching and consultant space, the biggest outcome is clients. Like people want revenue. So what outcomes are gonna be the most important or immediate or like the most immediate? How can we generate revenue for them quickly? There are other outcomes on the back end of that, um, but even people who like need to scale and build a team often incorrectly identify for themselves the problem being marketing. Like they'll, they'll think there's like a marketing or a strategy problem. So we have to speak to that. Yeah. Um, yeah, coaches, I mean, there are three major categories. Either people want uh, from your offers. People want either um, more wealth, more health, um, or better relationships, um, or better health, better relationships, or more wealth. Um, so coaches and consultants always more wealth, more wealth, more wealth, but there comes a time where, um, coaches and consultants are just trading their time for money, uh, and then they have enough money and then they're burnt out and they're like, how do I fall in love with this again? Um, and how do I, I put in teams and systems to scale? And that's really where our seven figure CEO program comes in. Uh, where I've been able to remove myself from the day-to-day -day operations. My team takes care of everything. And I just get to sit in my zone of genius. Um, so like, for example, uh, I just shot Avery over a message uh, last week. Hey, can you put this training together? He whipped up an amazing training for you guys. My marketing team promoted it. Uh, I didn't do anything. Uh, so um that, uh, that way I'm getting more freedom back in my life uh, and we continue to grow the business. And ultimately uh, what I've been able to do is become the CEO of my business instead of the doer of everything. And that's what we help our clients do in seven figure CEO. So definitely starting out um, money, 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 but then there comes a freedom component where it's like, I want more freedom, right? Someone was asking, I only have 40 members in my group. Uh, what's your, can you put your name in the chat or just unmute and let us know your name? Wait, that was funny. Just call it L Lucky Babies. Lucky Babies. Whoever that is. Um, so our, where we start our clients is off their ben. personal profile. Um, so you don't even need a group to sell your beta offer. Um, what we found with our system, with our processes, um, it takes about four to six weeks to ramp up an audience if you're starting from complete zero, um, if you're just consistent, um, and then you're making sales in the second month if you're starting from zero. Um, if you have a little bit of an audience, we can get a beta offer up quick and start selling it from 
a few of the the posts uh, that we have. So um, you don't even need a Facebook group starting out. And I have friends that are making millions of dollars off their personal profile, and I'm trying to tell them to start a Facebook group to expand. And they're like, no, I'm fine. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Um, and then, uh, yeah, you, you, you don't need a group. It, it's helpful in terms of scalability. If you want to go way down the rabbit's hole with me, um, what I'm looking to do is systemizing client acquisition channels. And then each client acquisition channel I systemize, then I'm looking to add another client acquisition channel on top of that. So like the name of the game for me to, to scale my business is optimize client acquisition channels and add client acquisition channel on client acquisition channel, meaning expanding to YouTube, expanding to podcasts, expanding to LinkedIn, all of that stuff. So um, yeah, that was a lot. Did that help though? Great, thank you. Awesome, sweet. <clears throat> awesome, uh, and for Chris, I mean, yes, I feel it is low. Like, could you get that up to like 1K? Maybe. Maybe. If the answer is no, then maybe we need to start where we need to start, I would say. You can unmute yourself and I'd love to just chat. Okay, hey, uh, yeah. Hey. So honestly, um, I think my biggest obstacle there has been I don't sense that I have the most moneyed social network. Um, and so I really wanna come in easy um, and provide like over over deliver you know so that all those that first wave of because i've got a bunch of good testimonials but i need ones that are pertinent to the course and i don't have like course relevant so i'm I, it's just a, it's like okay why don't we just start at 299 and climb to that 999 with like once i you know set like a a ladder almost is like all right so we hit you know 10 students in the beta we jump to 499 and then we had 20 students and they're thir you know and then we jumped to seven nine. you know what i mean like i'm just trying to think of a way to do it and i don't that's I, I got a question for you so you've got testimonials you know that you can get people results what was the promise you came up with uh the promise i'm coming up with is uh in 90 days we unleash your executive confidence um, and land your first major digital business contracts. Tell me more about digital business contract. Give me the 30 second. Learning how to uh, drop source and jump on top of, you know, getting asset creation done and having, you know, you just be the project manager and make money um, while you pay someone else to do the actual uh, fulfillment, right? So it's part of the escaping the, the work fulfillment matrix what's, that space. what's the potential upside for them revenue wise like if you have a shining star client who just crushes it where are they going to be at in 90 days revenue wise if they the, the my 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 whole thought has always been that i'm starting with people that have never made money online so in that, in coming from that context, if they have one recurring monthly contract by the end of that 90 days, I feel like I have really succeeded. How much is that contract worth to them? Uh, anywhere between two and five, I would say. It's, a, it's one of those life-saving contracts. I think we can all sort of speak to what right what those are like, but um, it's it's a groundbreaking contract for every, I think every agency builder. So I, I really want to jump into that space and like kind of like own that groundbreaking space where they've yep. never landed a digital contract off of social before, like ever, ever, ever. It's, and when you land that first one, it's just like, oh, you have that like dawning moment. And it's like, I just want to share that with everybody. And so it's like, I think keeping it attainable. So two to five thousand dollars in 90 days your first major contract i think is something that is something i can i can honestly and confidently teach and sell 
Um, okay. So it's really taken me a long time to get to this point, you know, where I can even consider this course and putting this all together and working with you guys. So I'm really grateful for this, but uh, yeah. And I'm recording it too right now. I'm literally every single thing is for the team and capturing this with integrity for, for you know, the I think you could start this around 1k there are two things like i think you could start this around 1k like is there at least doubling their money if they succeed the other thing is there's a difference between someone who doesn't know anything about how to do this online and someone who's been trying and it just hasn't clicked yet okay we want the clients who understand the space and know what they want but maybe need that missing piece as opposed to someone we have to educate profusely so i think there's an opportunity one for you to take a stand for the results like i think it can be at least 1k and i think if we had some time to dig deeper into this i think you can like help people get even bigger results yeah. and two i think there's an opportunity for you to get a little farther like remember that s curve of the client journey yeah. you're like at the very beginning i just want to push you to the right a little so they're like well, push me into Maybe the Maybe not completely green behind the ears because we're that's going to help us get them a better result. You, you're pushing it into the core and pushing towards that three to six range, which is what you were stressing. Yeah. So it definitely struck me. I was like, oh, God, I'm way low. Um, yeah. but, but again, I also don't have my my agency. I like to I like to conceive of having like a wide range of possibilities for people at different price points, you know. Um, and, and I, it's like, I hate saying no to people with lower price points. And, and that's one of the things that, you know, it's like, okay, well then, you know, I create, and then I, I would create like a 499 course, a 999 course, a $1,500 course. And really each one is just like next level value. And I, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just starting out, but I love the model and I love what you guys do. And, um, I got tremendous value out of this. So thank you for yeah. your answer and everything is provided. Focus. I'd, I'd love to add something there as well, if that's cool with you, Chris. Of course. So like, I want to serve a wide variety of people. I want to help the newbies along with the seven and eight figure coaches as well. Right. Um, but uh, with that low end product, what that's doing is somebody's going to buy a course. I don't believe in just selling courses anymore. Um, like somebody buys a course and then typically they don't implement. Like I've even seen on the back end of some really, really well-known uh, course creators and they have like, uh, uh, like 10 percent go through 10 percent or more of the course. Like it's just sad. Courses are sad. Um, like what people really need is the accountability and the roadmap, right? Um, and, and that sort of help. Like how I serve the people that are just starting out is through my free content. Like you can go to my YouTube channel, you can go to my Facebook group, you can go through that content and like, look at what Avery just provided. Like you can take this and probably like make some money and get your first win. Um, and uh, from there, um, I've had plenty of people say, yo, I made so much money from your free stuff. I just felt like I needed to pay you money. Um, so they joined Authority Accelerator, Seven Figure CEO. Like ultimately do that, like over deliver in your free content, give away the farm because that's going to force you to level up as well. And when I started my Facebook group and started growing my personal profile, I just over delivered because that made me come from a place of abundance instead of scarcity and just was like, okay, I gave that away. Now I need to learn something new. And I was just forced to level up. And that's what really forced my growth and really, really helped. I think you're muted. Yeah, my cat's crying. So I uh, turned them to the mic off. <laughs> He's like, feed me. <laughs> okay. But uh, amazing value, honestly, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. I, I really can't even stress it enough. The targeted information for me and my crew is like invaluable, 100%. Yeah. Awesome. I want to hear from Heather, who's been like the secret person giving me good facial expressions and feedback the entire time. Thank you for that. And what questions do you have? I don't know for me it's more of so I've been able to organically and be able to flow it from social to 
calendar to phone call to 2500 sale immediately for a 90 day program. So I'm pretty confident in my offer. Like I'm just like, listen, it's 2500 minimum to work with me. That's just is what it is. Um, the way that I've been doing it set up as one and one, like one on one has been the initial because I was starting out. Um, and it's 190, no, 160 minute phone call a week. Um, and then we, I do like, I do a midweek check because I like the accountability aspect of it. So it's like a 30 minute midweek check to make sure my thing is once again, just getting it. Cause I'm pretty holistic. Like I'm a lifestyle entrepreneur. I want to grow a business, be happy, travel with my kids. I want to be able to, I don't want to work in my business. I want so I'm all about, I love automation. I love learning new things. I like, so I dig into their business. I'm like, okay, so what are you currently doing? Right. I don't just try to change stuff. I'm like, where, cause my people are already making money. They're already selling. They're ready to grow. So for me, it's like, how do you take it when you're on that approach of like, okay, like instead of me being able to dig in their business and see what they're doing and then come to them specifically like, okay, this is what you're doing. Okay. Now what do you want to do? Like I have people that are like, my girlfriend freaking hates it. I work until 10 o'clock on a Friday. I'm like, okay, well let's streamline some stuff to get you out. Like, what do you want to do? So, and then I, we implement automations processes and all those things. So it's basically, how is your business currently running? How are your customers coming in? How are you updating them? All these different touch points. What can, like, where do you want your business to be? What do you like doing? What you, what don't you like to do? Okay, great. How do we automate some of that stuff? How do we outsource some of that stuff? And then we just keep adjusting as needed. But to me, that seems like it's, I don't know how to like group that. <laughs> like as with like, you know, the basics. So, so it's kind of like, I have to teach them how to audit their business processes on their own. That. And then, okay. Yeah, there is a process in your brain and you actually just spoke it out loud. Yeah. What's happening is you are looking at sets of data mm -hmm. and using the data to evaluate where the problems are. And when you've identified the core problems, there are courses of action that correlate. Okay. That's replicable. You need to extract that from your brain. We need to take that out of your brain and we need to figure out what is the data they're looking at right and build a process to teach people how to self-evaluate and then we need to take your diagnoses and map out i would imagine there are a handful of prognoses that you kind of give over and over and over again yeah. those handful of prognoses are actually roadmaps so it sounds like this might be the basis of an mrr or even part of your core offer where it's if this then that Okay. So it's literally sitting down and we extract that from your brain and figure out what are those roadmaps. And now like we can teach someone how to self-evaluate and choose what their action is. You're just doing the evaluation for them in your head right now. Right. Okay. And I know it, we're like, I already got, like I get, I'm a testimonial girl. So as soon as we're off of the call, I'm like, excuse me, can you give me a favor? Um, so I'm already getting the feedback. I get the weekend, you know, like messages, like the excitement, the craziness, like they're like, it's working. And I'm like, I know. So it's like, I already have that to like grow it. I just, once again, it's getting it from here. And so they can do it. Yeah. hundred percent. Um, can I add some to that, Heather? Yeah. Um, I went through the process of, I used to do a bunch of one-on-one -on -one calls and what I came to realize is, especially now, um, I was playing incredibly small by offering so many one-on-one -on -one calls um, because there's a way to systemize the process, streamline it, and get a team in place for them to do it for you so you can impact a shit ton more people. Right. And talk about lifestyle business, like I've taken six weeks off so far this year probably going to take eight to 10 weeks off before the end of the year. Um, like it's, it's, it's just about um, systemizing your processes. And for us, as soon as we get a new client, the first thing that they do is fill out the onboarding form and the onboarding form goes into every question that I want to know, or my team wants to know. So I can literally look at their onboarding form and know exactly what they need to do or my team looks at it, knows exactly what they need to do. 
Um, and then it just comes down to implementing that process that we lay out uh, for the clients. Um, so there's a way to do it. Um, and uh, you, can, you can have both. And I highly recommend uh, getting out of the one-on-ones per week. Um, that will crush you as you scale. Um, and uh, if you're open to it, everything that I heard from you is that we might be able to help you. So if you're open to it, I highly recommend hopping on a call and just exploring it with, uh, with Marco if you're open okay. to the possibility. Yep. Cool. Thank you. Yep. See you. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Heather. I want to hear from Dano. Hey, hey, what's up? Can you hear me okay? I can hear you perfectly. All right. What's up, uh, What's up, Avery? First off, man, the way that you brought everything to life, I just got to give you snaps right here on behalf of everybody. You made it so easy and so got so many aha moments right off the bat. Um, okay, uh, I spoke with Andrew a little bit prior. Uh, I've got, I'm actually in a pretty awesome spot right now. I've been running a Facebook community. We're just shy of 40,000 members. Very proud about that, highly engaged. Um, it, we're foodies, okay? So my customer base is uh, uh, mom and pop restaurant owners who are just sick of where they're at and dealing with all the effects of COVID, getting, uh, having trouble filling their tables, sales just plummeting, they're in trouble, man, they're feeling. So right there, it's so easy to paint that picture because they're living it. Um, I, I'm, God, bro, my notes are just flying. Um, the, uh, the MRR offer is where I'm at. So, so my, my potential client will be, um, originally before this call, it was a do it offer, you know, hey, I will do your marketing, I will do this. But after hearing what you guys are saying, man, in a year, I'm, I'm going to be burnt out. And that's not where I want to be. So, um, okay, so originally, uh, do it for them. Now I'm switching gears, I'm going to help mom and pop restaurants, automate their marketing, um, yep. think, think like there really is no box there's no box just throw that out the window throw that idea out there and um help them step into the new age as far as everything and like when it comes to networking man i'm a wizard i'm a wizard at organic networking creating a brand creating a facebook group and so i'm kind of thinking right now as i'm taking notes you know if i bring on a hundred clients and i show them how to do everything I did organically, man, I could double, triple their sales without breaking a sweat. And so um, honestly, looking at everything, I, I was thinking too little. I was gauging my goals way too low this past year where, um, and like the way I have it now, like I'm going to turn my annual revenue into my monthly revenue is where I'm going at. Um, and uh so, so what I'm thinking now is um, instead of doing the work for my potential clients, teaching them, but after, oh, okay, by the way, my, my 90 day promise, I'm still working on how I'm, I'm going to uh, market it and word it, but it's essentially in 90 days, you're going to double your sales. Like that, that's sexy, right? That's sexy. It's going to get them to where they want to be. Obviously I'm doing so much more. Um, I'm going to create their brand awareness. I'm going to fill seats. I'm going to increase sales. I'm going to turn one customer into five customers. I'm going to turn each of those five customers into four time repeated customers. The it's, it's just going to scale immensely. Um, so that's where I'm at. Does that sound okay? I am in 90 days. I can double. Okay, sweet. Um, yeah. Now, now uh, the MRR is where I'm at. So I kind of want to clarify you know, um, I've been I've been in groups and masterminds and the list goes on. Um, essentially, they hit their goal, they're happy with their goal. And now they can see themselves 10 xing the goal and I'm here kind of offering a monthly uh, service. Is that kind of where it's at for them to get from A to B and then B to D or, or B to Q? Yeah. Is that kind of yeah. where it's at? 
So there's a lot in there, but what I'm going to extract out is two things. One, yes. the core offer promise that you kind of hit upon sounds mm -hmm. succinct. It sounds where, like where you need to go. How I want you to think about this for your particular clients for an MRR is the core offer promises about getting them the results and doubling their revenue. Mm -hmm. The MRR for them is about implementing a comprehensive system so that they never have to worry about where to get new leads, in this case, customers. customer acquisition, yeah. essentially. Okay. Right. So for you, the promise around an MRR is going to be more around like you're going to build a system that does these things. And when the system's in place, that's how they double year over year and really scale. So if I create a system that they can do and they can replicate if they follow it they will be successful wouldn't they kind of fall off after that because they'll continue doing it they won't need me no there's always no. new levels and new devils okay 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 um and, awesome and um more, i'd be happy one more thing to add to that as yeah. as you grow you'll find more problems that you can solve so like I started with just selling Authority Accelerator because I just knew how to help coaches reach that six figure mark or do their first launch, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then as I grew over the year, um, my business grew, my skill set grew, and I grew my business past seven figures. And I learned the intricacies of growing a business, a coaching consulting business to that. And doing it myself, I was like, okay, now I need to break it down the system of how I did this. I started with a beta group, started mm -hmm. testing it out, um, and then I grew the seven-figure CEO offer. So just trust as like you grow, your skill set grows, um, you're going to be able to figure out new problems for you to solve uh, for your clients. And the name of the game, honestly, is um, is uh, customer lifetime value. Really providing that result and keeping them for a long time because these these coaches and course creators out there that launch the thing, have a big month, and then their clients don't stay around. They don't have a sustainable business, right? It goes back down. Um, and if you look at any of the heavy hitters in the space, they have um, multiple offers to maximize customer lifetime value. But you start with one offer at a time. And I wouldn't build out both your core offer and your MRR offer at the same time. I would nail down your core offer and then move on to the MRR offer. And at that point, you'll discover new problems that you can solve for those people. Absolutely, okay, okay. Um, very good. Uh, I did have, no, I'll leave it at that. I'll, I'll message you or Avery privately later on if I have any more uh, specific questions. Sweet. Th thanks, Avery. You're welcome. Uh, one last person I'd love to hear from is Beverly. She was one of my other cheerleaders that I was watching the whole time. I'd love to hear like your biggest takeaway and any questions that we can help solve. Oh, awesome. Thanks, Avery. I love how you presented everything um, and the stages of core offer to the inflection point and where you go from there. So really tailoring. Um, how the, the whole step ladder of success works. So I love that. Um, with what I'm developing, I'm really bringing together a unique conglomeration of skills that I haven't seen anywhere else. So I bring together neuro movement, working with people's brains, um, integrated body psychotherapy. I bring together shamanism, intuitive guidance, um, a lot of different skills and people are getting great results. And so it's just in putting that forward, just trying to figure out, you know, the deliverables on it, you know, trying to make it look like it's achievable and accessible to people because there's a lot of really different stuff that I'm pulling together here. Yeah. yeah. So I have, Good news, and I have interesting news. <laughs> so, you, Andrew, is talking about the different types of offers, right? Like, um, basically, there's like wealth, 
relationships health mm -hmm. in the personal development space there's kind of an a type of offer that's a hybrid of all three right i define that as have a better life offer right mm -hmm. we're literally helping people uh spherically enhance every area of their life i would be curious for you based on the clients you've been serving what are the themes like I would imagine there are threads or themes that are coming through for most of them uh, in like the reasons why they're coming to you for this work. What are some of those? Um, something that's been repeated to me as I've worked with people is I've heard this several times that in two sessions with me, they've progressed more than in 10 years of therapy. And I've heard that several times over and over. So recognizing their patterns, which are, you know, starting in childhood, and I'm not doing uh, psychotherapy, I'm doing coaching, but seeing how that plays out in their lives over and over again. And so at this point in their life, and I'm talking about women over 40, particularly, they're fed up, they're stuck, they don't know where to go, they only know what they've always done. And yep. I break through and it opens the doors and hallelujah. <laughs> so this particular client, uh, women over the age of 40, uh, go through something that I call the shift from ambition to meaning. Yes. Uh, they're at a stage in their life where they many times for the first time in their life uh, are forced to reckon with like creating meaning for themselves. What do they want their purpose to be? What do they really want to do with their life? We have a client inside of seven figure CEO. Uh, his name is Spencer. He does personal development work that is like spiritual and tapped in. He brings like a really amazing process to it. So for you, I would say like the marketing and the messaging around this is going to be like it's around reinventing themselves, like reinvent your life mm -hmm. so that you can like achieve the goal. Like most of them come to you with a goal in mind, like something they've been wanting to do or haven't been able to achieve. So we can speak to that and say, like, you're going to reinvent your life and, you know, achieve that goal within this time frame by breaking through these blocks and patterns and unleashing your full potential. So you can do that. Um, it's going to require in your case, like process is super important, right? Like having your process dialed in and knowing how to speak to it because you're not going to be able to say you're going to generate X amount of money or you're going to find the love of your life, but you can say, I help people unleash their full potential with this process. And when people use this process, here's the things that are able to happen in their lives. So for you, a lot of this is around like process, branding that process and like just showing up as the person who has the keys to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Thank you. Yeah. Can I add something too, Beth? Sure. <clears throat> Um, this, yeah, this actually does remind me a lot of Spencer. Um, I put his uh, personal profile link in the chat if you want to check out some of oh, his awesome. stuff. He has a great Facebook group as well. Um, he brands himself as a mind mechanic, uh, works on helping his clients get into flow state, optimize their workflow. Um, and he runs a, a live in his group every week called Precise Languaging um, that allows, it's kind of like affirmations, but so much better. Um, and what really sells his programs are the testimonials that he gets from his clients and showing those testimonials off. Because in your messaging, it might not be, I help clients make money or a relationship, what have you. But in your testimonials, your clients might say um, that they've gotten more done than they ever have in their life and, or they lost a certain amount of weight because they thought about themselves differently. Um, and uh, that is really what's going to sell your programs. And like same thing for our programs, like uh, 
the reason why people buy or tip is typically because they saw a testimonial saying, Hey, I'm in this niche and I created this result. Um, and that really pushed them over the edge to enroll. Um, so I would really focus in on capturing video testimonials and, and written screenshots of uh, results and really just uh, check out our, our testimonial tank page and how I present testimonials on my personal profile. Um, so it's a great way to uh, get more people in your program. Awesome. Yeah, that's very helpful. Thank you. Cool. Awesome. Well, that rounds it up for the people who at least I can see. I want to make sure there are no final questions before we wrap it up and say thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, for anyone who's still on, I'm going to pop the link in the chat one more time for Marco and the team. I know, I think we've got a few of you have book calls. I'm excited at the opportunity to work with you guys. Like just in the work you've been able to do today was fantastic. Awesome. Sweet. If you guys are watching, if you catch the replay of this in the Facebook group, hashtag replay, we'll post the link for the scaling session with the team there as well. And thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here today. Andrew, take us home. Uh, what Avery said, guys, thank you so much. Uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for playing full out and being fun in the chat and the people watching the Facebook Live. Thank you so much for being here. Um, if you guys have anybody that uh, you think would uh, get value out of uh, this training, feel free to um, tag them in the training in the Facebook group so they can check it out. And yeah, that's about it. Thanks, guys, and uh, have an amazing night.